some tasty little morsels for you this week. You know, the book of Galatians was Martin Luther's favorite epistle. He called it his epistle, and he said he was married to it, like his wife Catherine. Galatians was the cornerstone of the Reformation, and it's been called the Magna Carta of the early church. It is the first of Paul's letters. And here, Paul draws the sharpest, most succinct argument for free, unadulterated, effortless grace versus the bewitchment of religious self-effort, you know, human attempts at a law-based spirituality. And he lays out that it's all about faith, simply trusting Jesus, not vain religious exercises. It's here that he tells us, I have been co-crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, it's not even my faith, but the life I live is by the faithfulness of the Son of God. But in the background of Galatians, it is important to recognize the context into which Paul's preaching is playing out, and it has to do with his adversaries. As you know, Paul was plagued by troublers, religious Judaizers, lawmen who wanted to add to his message. These guys were preaching circumcision in addition to Christ. Just like today, people preach fasting or 24-hour prayer or inner healing or shofar blowing in addition to Christ. At times, he called them the circumcision lot. At one point, he says, I wish those guys would just chop the whole thing off. Now, they didn't openly reject Paul's message, but they added to it. The law is an add-on, the surcharge to grace. Paul says you can't have it both ways. You take that one little clip from these circumcision boys and you are obligated to follow the entire law. You are essentially saying, Jesus, the cross was not enough for my spirituality, so I need to help you out a little bit and clip my dinky as well. Now, not only was Paul's work regularly compromised by these troublers, but you have to realize the brutal persecution that Paul faced from Jew and Gentile alike. He says, five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. The law demanded 40 lashes, and they thought they were being merciful by only giving him 39. So if the Jew had a hypocritical conscience, well, rest assured that the Gentiles, they had no conscience at all. They would beat him all day long. He says, three times I was beaten with the rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I'm in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from Jews, in danger from Gentiles. I'm in danger in the city. I'm in danger in the country. I'm in danger at sea. I'm in danger from false brothers. He says, I've labored and toiled. I have often gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I've been cold old and naked. Besides everything else, I faced the daily stress of my concern for all the churches. He was in prison. He was constantly on the run. Once he was lowered from a basket in a window to escape uh, his oppressors, he was mocked and ridiculed, literally or metaphorically fought wild beasts at Ephesus. Understand that Paul paid a massive price for preaching the cross of Christ. See, there is this baloney cross, this false cross that so many teachers preach. The idea that you must kill off your own sinful nature to please God, your cross. You've got to jump through some legal hoops. So they have everyone subserviently navel-gazing, trying to clean themselves up, their old Adamic fallen self, which doesn't even exist anymore in Jesus. And you think you're all gung-ho and being a real strong, committed, hardcore disciple, when in reality, you are a cowardly sissy because you are avoiding the real cross of Christ. The real cross is scandalous because it's so easy. It's a joke. Jesus did it all. But my friends, 
That is the very thing that infuriates the world. That's not how the world system works. See, all of that do-it-yourself religion is a diversion from the real controversy. See, you can control the snippet of your wanky and, and all your little external bowings and dietary restrictions and hand-washing formulas, or, or let's substitute today for the evangelical Pentecostal strivings to press in or climb the ladder to get closer to God and work your way into a heavenly experience. See, all that is a diversion. That is human effort. That's something you are controlling. And that is a false cross trying to navel gaze and kill something that doesn't exist. And they are avoiding the real one, the real cross. And why do you avoid the real one? Because you might get a real one. See, for years, those of you guys who've been tracking with us, you know our message. Co-crucified, Jesus carried your cross. You don't die to your sinfulness, your own separate cross, etc., etc. You're holy, perfectly accepted. But Jesus did talk about taking up your cross and following after him. But what was he talking about? Well, he's clearly not saying to pop a cap in your old nature, your old man, unless you think we should extract every writing from Paul from the Bible who says you've already died. No, point blank, Jesus is saying, if you follow me, if you hang out with me, people are going to want to kill you. Literally. When Paul says, I die daily, he means it literally. They wanted the guy's head on a silver platter. It, it, he's not talking about killing some morbid, interior, old, depressed self. I mean, for crying out loud, go Google me. Do you know how many literal death threats I've gotten over the years? The, the ones preaching a save yourself, do it yourself cross are avoiding the scandal of the real cross of grace and thereby avoiding the real blowback of real persecution for preaching such a happy, glorious message. They're playing little non-offensive religious games, pandering to the choir that already feels self-deprecating. Their false cross of kill your sinful self, well, that sells. It appeals to the masses existing false identity that God hates them or they are dirty and they deserve it. It's literally tickling the ears of an existing sense of insecurity and self-condemnation. Society is not going to kill you for moralizing on people. CNN does that all the time. So does Fox News. Guilt and manipulation sells. Grace, on the other hand, you can't even give that away. Preach grace which upends all these moralistic systems and societal hierarchies of control, well, that will get you filleted faster than a number two at Long John Silver. This idiotic carry your cross in a sense of clean yourself up, die to self, become new, man, that's already happened. You're avoiding the joyful scandal of grace because if there is a cross you're going to carry, again, it's a real one. It is rejection. It is persecution. It is Texas Chainsaw Master baby. And just as it was with Jesus, it'll primarily come from the religious order. So back to Galatians. By the end of that book, we see a culmination of this whole thing as Paul lays out the concrete issue of what was practically going on this whole time behind just the theological side that he so clearly lays out in the book. See, in the very last paragraph of Galatians, he says, see with what large letters I'm writing you with my own hand. He's like, guys, I want you to get this. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Their failure to embrace the message of the cross was directly correlated to their cowardice. They were afraid of men. They were afraid of persecution. It is for the cross of Christ that Paul has stripes on his back. He's taken this whole thing where none of these guys dared to go while they were fiddling with their pixie sticks for Jesus. He has tangibly entered into the, the sharing of the sufferings of Christ. Not suffering for grace, but because of grace. He says, for even those who are circumcised don't even keep the law themselves, but they desire to have you circumcised so they can boast in your flesh. 
You think these guys cared a lick about your spirituality? No way. They literally had a belt. These Judaizers, they had a trophy rack of foreskins that they carried around on them all the time. They uh, worked for tips. But what is Paul preaching? Trimming your noodle to please God, starving yourself, fasting to please God. But far be it from me to boast, he says, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the very thing he says, by which the world is crucified to him and him to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor does uncircumcision count for anything. None of these things matter. The only thing that matters, a new creation. For Paul, the exercise of the clip means nothing, and at the same time, not doing the exercise of the clip means nothing. It is all about this new life, this identity, this new creation, our union with him. And what's the last thing he says here? He says, I will not be troubled anymore. I could care less about it all. I already bear enough scars in my body that brand me as being under the ownership of Jesus. The Mirror Bible says it this way, those scars that I carry from being persecuted for this gospel are more significant to me than the scar of circumcision. You pull down your drawers, well, let me pull off my shirt. These troublemakers refused to suffer, so they just go make stuff up. Hell, they might even make up a false theology of suffering, which is just an excuse for their depression. But Paul has the stripes to prove his authority. He was carrying in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Paul saying, okay, boys. You want to see who the real apostles are? Let's take our tops off. Let's see how smooth and silky your backs are. They were cowards. And I would encourage you out there, if you're a ministry pastor, if you're listening to this today, brothers and sisters, fellow laymen, whoever you are, don't be a coward. That's not the existence that he's carved out for you. You tell the truth in the face of religious fuming, bloodthirsty angst. Now, I am not trying to work you up into a gung-ho froth to go get martyred right now, but let me ask, what is holding you back from preaching straight grace? Afraid you might lose a follower on Instagram, maybe a tither or two? I will say that you can't preach such a scandal in your own strength because you can't handle resistance on your own. You have to be hammered drunk on the goodness of this grace message because this is not just a theological articulation anyway. There is substance. Grace is tangible glory, tangible substance. And when this glory gets hold of you, you have to give it away. A drunk man will say things a sober man never will. All of the persecutions of the early church were marked by radical ecstasy. That's the thing about his sacrificial love. When you really catch a vision of the passion, it gets hold of you and reproduces itself in you. And you are willing to do anything, take any beat down, lose any friend, go anywhere, pay any repercussion because you have become blind, drunk, overmastered by love. Guys, I love you guys. Bless you. And, and before you go, come party with us. We love connecting, experiencing the glory together. Come get just invigorated with us. So before you go back to your Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, take a quick look at these little announcements of stuff that we have on tap. Guess what? It's Christmas marketing season and I have just the thing to spike your eggnog. We have just developed an all new upgraded model of our Quantum Crowder Joypod. If you have the old plastic dinky model, it is time to upgrade. This brand new MP3 player has 50% more Crowder teaching with over 45 hours of revelatory full length preaching sessions you won't find on YouTube. It also has two full length audio books with me reading Mystical Union as well as Money, Sex, Beer, God. 
bedtime stories you can listen to all night and get brainwashed by the scandalous message of grace. This comes with earbuds and a convenient charging cable. No batteries needed. Solid metal zinc construction and fancy gold tone. Because that's how we roll solid gold. It contains everything we have from our digital download store, plus special material found nowhere else on our site. Get one for yourself and stuff someone else's stocking with love this Christmas. At 125 clams, you are actually saving more than 60 bucks if you were to buy all the teachings individually. Plus, you get the nifty player device essentially for free. With lots of extra storage space, you can add even more audio or transfer the teachings to your computer or other mobile devices. Pick it up now at johncrowder.net while Santa is slashing prices and know that your purchase is supporting our ministry endeavors all over the world. I'm here to announce officially the Gospel Funhouse Tour. It's a drunken vacation Bible school for adults and children alike. A crazy carnival of Holy Ghost bliss and oddities coming to four cities in February, March 2017. Tim Wright will lead worship. We're coming to Atlanta, Georgia, New York City, Cleveland, Ohio, and Omaha, Nebraska. Come experience supernatural joy unspeakable. This will fill up, so tickets are on sale now. Register early before it fills up at the New Mystics com slash fun hey uh you know i started blasting up right i went up and up and up and up hey and you know what finally happened i went up as far as i could go and i found canada <laughs> The Cosmic Canadian Tour featuring John Crowder and Tim Wright comes to four cities coast to coast in May 2017. Montreal, Toronto, Edmonton, and Abbotsford. Tickets available now at thenewmystics.com backslash can. I'll be in Geneva, Switzerland for our only European school this year. Then I am back to the UK in January for a mystical school in Manchester, England. Find all our events at thenewmystics.com slash schools. We've also recently added a Supernatural Grace Conference to the calendar for Las Vegas, Nevada with Tim Wright leading worship, myself and Rob Radosti. Visit thenewmystics.com slash Vegas. The next mission trip on the calendar where you can apply to join us is to India next March 2017. You'll be healing the sick and releasing impartation in a massive evangelism campaign. We'll also host a huge pastor's conference equipping leaders in the gospel of grace. We'll be visiting the poorest of the poor in the garbage dumps and also visit one of our Sons of Thunder orphanages in Mumbai. There is such an ease to flow in the supernatural in India. We always see blind eyes and deaf ears open, cripples begin to walk, and tombs disappear from bodies. Freely we give and freely we receive. Even if you've never operated in the miraculous, there's a crazy activation of your faith as you travel to release the glory to the margins of society. Keep in mind, there's plenty of time to raise funds and make plans, but we do need your deposit to lock in a spot by December 15th. Everyone loves the India trips. Our last one just had too many folks, like 50 people, so we're limiting this one to a smaller team so I can personally connect more with the group. So take Take a step of faith, sign up early, and ensure you get a spot. I'm bringing my own wife and kids on this one, so whether you're a family, church group, or just an individual, feel free to email us any questions. But first, visit thenewmystics.com slash India for all the information. Sons of Thunder runs on partnerships and generous contributions from people like you. If you've been blessed by the ministry and want to participate in sharing the gospel and reaching the poor with us, consider becoming a monthly supporter at thenewmystics.com partners.